Okay, so look, they had a leak. So when they pressurized it over here with the nitrogen, what'd you get it up to? 170. 170, and then they waited five minutes, and what happened? It went down to 150. So they lost 20 PSI in like five minutes. That we've got to find, and they want to know where the leak is. So they got the vacuum pump, and they got the micron gauge, but we're not quite ready for this yet. If, I did, if it didn't drop at all, then I would get the micron gauge. So if it stayed at 170 for 10 minutes, then I would get the micron gauge, hook a vacuum up, see if it could get down to what number? What's the number that we got to yesterday? 500. 500 at least. Yeah, we got down to a couple hundred, but 500. And then if it stays at 500, what does that mean? Sealed tight. No leaks. But if it goes up from 500 to 2,000 to 4,000 to 10,000, what does that mean? There's a leak if it keeps going up. Now, if it just goes up a little bit and stays, could have been air, could have been leftover refrigerant. But if it keeps going back up to this, where there's no numbers, atmosphere, then that's gonna be a leak, and you're gonna need to pressure test it again, but with a little bit of refrigerant, because this leak detector does not pick up just nitrogen, which is just in that tank there that we used to pressurize with. So you've gotta, we're using 134A for this, you could use R22 for the 22 systems, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and use the 134A, and this leak detector, now they've gotta go through and sniff around all their joints with this probe to see if there's any refrigerant leaking out. Because what this sensor picks up is stuff other than air, other than oxygen, nitrogen. When it comes in contact with the refrigerant, there'll be a tone change. It almost sounds like a video game. You remember this from last year? I, I don't. You don't remember it? Yeah, some night not I got to use it in a couple of the classes, but that's the tone it makes when it's normal. Now, if I'm leaking, I'm gonna make a leak that we can hear. You hear that? So that when I come across that leak now, the tone is changing. Yeah, we one again. We could, we could just so sample that, John. Clear it. If you go through and you sniff every area, and it stays the same tone. You might have to turn the sensitivity up. And then go back again and see if it goes through again. Now I know that doesn't leak because I tightened it up, but if I loosen it a little bit, definitely a big leak there. So there's where your leak would be. And then we will come back with the soap bubbles, the spray bubbles we got in the tool room, and that will pinpoint exactly where the leak is because maybe it's a flare, Maybe it's a solder, there's a pinhole with a little bit of flux that got in there and stayed. Could be a bunch of different things. But the trace gas, and if it's not enough pressure to get up to the, because they're only supposed to go with a, about 10 PSI here, to get the back up to uh, the test pressure, we use another 150 pounds of the nitrogen on top of that. So even though you're only at like 40 or 50, now we're good with that tank. You go ahead, unscrew, take turn the tank off. And you didn't want to turn it upside down. We don't need liquid in there, but I don't think that tank has but it's just a little bit of gas left. We'll know when you unscrew if there's liquid that comes out. Go ahead and open it. No liquid, so there's no liquid in that tank. This tank's almost empty. You can hear it when you bang it. Now go ahead and bring that hose back up here to nitrogen. But there was enough for us to just put the trace gas in. It's like 50 PSI of gas. You gotta screw it. Now you don't need to push it. Let the screw screw on and do its thing. You're not, you're not, you're not letting the screw do its thing. No, you, you don't push. You just let the screw screw on. There you go. And then it will lock in. So now go ahead and open up. It doesn't really matter. We're gonna go ahead and open up the red though. I said. And then once you get it back up to 150, I'm gonna bring it down to maybe 120. Open up the blue. It should go to about 120. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ish. And you don't want to go higher than the lower of the two numbers on the low side test pressure. So on the two numbers there. All right, that should be it. Go ahead and turn the gauges off. 
So now we've got, we had about 10 or 15 PSI of the refrigerant, but that might not be enough to push out through some of these joints. So we're gonna go ahead, look at the name plate, the data plate. The max we can go is 162. Because the high side says we can go up to 440, but both high side and low side are connected together. So we really can't go higher than the lower of those two numbers, which is 162. Now you can safely go ahead and just do your thing. You can go through about a half inch per second, maybe a half inch to an inch per second, and you just go around. Now I don't, I'm doing all the factory joints. I, I, won't, I would expect these are fine. The factory ones, the ones I would test are the ones that you connected up first. Right? And then again, if it goes off and you can't find where exactly it's leaking, get the soap bubbles, it says big blue in there, squirt it down and see where it's bubbling up from. All right? Leak testing with trace gas and nitrogen under pressure as dictated by the data plate. Okay, that's the next step. If you come and you hold pressure with nitrogen and it drops, okay? Or if you get to the next step and hold a vacuum and it gets to 500 and goes up. Those are the two times where you've got to do jackpot. Is that your metering device? Yeah. Yep. And then usually what happens, it's not, you're not using two wrenches to tighten up that flare nut. You need one wrench on the metering device right here. Go ahead and build around a little bit. So a good leak point is right here, either on that quarter inch, because there's a wrench that's supposed to go right here. If you didn't put the wrench there and tighten the flare nut, it'll never go down and seat up properly. Or, same thing with this flare nut. These two, you gotta have a wrench here on there, as well as the one for the flare nut. Remember, you always need a wrench for holding. You can't just hold this and take the wrench with your hand and try and do it tight like that. You need, that's why they give us this hexagon shape right here to put another wrench on. One wrench, two wrench, two wrenches, one hand, always. Don't try and use two. And then yeah, go ahead and check all your other areas while everything's under pressure before we pull. This, with a little bit of trace gas, we cannot recover. It can be blown out into the atmosphere. That's on the test question of one of the EPA tests. All of them have that same question. After you're done with the trace gas and mixing it with the nitrogen for leak testing, de minimis, that Latin term for the minimum amount, de minimis is okay to release to the atmosphere. All right, just that one? Yeah. All right, we're good. I guess Thank you. Good.